Hello to all students. I hope you are doing fine. Today we are going to discuss hydrostatic skeleton. If we look at the literal meaning of hydrostatic, hydro means water, while static means to stay. And skeleton is a type of uh, bones or cartilage in the body which supports the body. So there are different types of animals in animal kingdoms. Some animals contain endoskeleton in the form of bone and cartilage which supports their body like humans. Some other animals they contain exoskeleton which have chitinous skeleton which is present outside their body like insects and some other invertebrates like animals they do not have exo or endoskeleton rather they have hydrostatic skeleton that is due to a fluid present in a cavity. So today we are going to discuss that uh, hydrostatic skeleton with the help of two examples of two different animals from animal kingdom. The first example of hydrostatic skeleton is sea anemone. As you know that sea anemone is, a animal, is an animal which belongs to phylum cnidaria or cylindrata in which hydra also belongs. Sea anemone usually found in marine water attached with a substratum or a rock. It has a cylindrical body which has a uh, tentacles on the uh, oral surface of the body the mouth is present in the center and mouth is surrounded by mobile tentacles which are which contain cavities so i have taken a cross section of this animal uh, in this animal there is a uh, there is a base which is attached to the substratum and between the central body there are two types of muscles which are known as longitudinal muscles and circular muscles which are arranged around the whole length of the body. And in the center of the body there is a cavity which is fluid filled, which is water filled, which is known as gastrovascular cavity. And uh, from mouth water enters this cavity and also leaves uh, from this cavity. So this animal uh, can uh, acquire skeleton with the help of water or fluid inside this uh, water vascular cavity. This uh, water vascular system, which is known as uh, hydrostatic skeleton, uh, acts like a uh, balloon. So when a uh, water is filled inside the balloon, it becomes erect. And when water leaves the balloon, it becomes soft and the body becomes white and down. So when mouth opens, water enters into the gast uh, gastrovascular cavity. Then, then uh, muscles present around the mouth uh, are closed and the circular muscles are contract while uh, longitudinal muscles relax. At this time, the body become, pressure is exerted on the fluid present in the gastrovascular cavity and body become elongated. It decreases in width and increases in length. During uh, this stage, the animal uh, usually survive or live in the daylight and uh, usually perform daily activities like reproduction, like feeding, and respiration and etc all the processes of the life but when there is a danger when there is a predator when there is a uh, some kind of uh, issue uh, this animal opens its mouth and uh, contracts its longitudinal muscle while relaxed circular muscle during this condition water moves out of the uh, gastrovascular cavity and the width of the body increases while the length of the body decreases so in this way the animal becomes soft and goes toward the bottom and stay there until the danger is over and when the danger is over it uh, again water enters into the gastro gastrovascular cavity longitudinal muscle relax circular muscle contract and they again become into upright position so in this way this soft bodied animals maintain a skeleton with help of fluid water inside the gastrovascular cavity which is a good example of hydrostatic skeleton the second example we are going to discuss about hydrostatic skeleton is another example which is uh, b which belongs to phylum Annelida. It is known as earthworm. Earthworm has elongated body as you can see in this diagram and the body is segmented, metamerically segmented. So when we take a cross section of the body of, the, of an earthworm, we see that there are two types of muscles present inside the uh, body of earthworm. 
The first muscles are circular muscles which are present in the circumference of the body while the second muscles are longitudinal muscles which are present which runs along the length of the body. When both of these muscles contract and relax alternately it produces a skeleton inside the body of an earthworm and also helps in the locomotion of the animal. So there is a silom present inside the body of the earthworm which is filled with a fluid which is known as silomic fluid. When muscles contract they they exert a pressure on the silomic fluid which uh, with the pressure exerted on the silomic fluid distributed along whole side of the body and produce a kind of motion locomotion inside the body of an earthworm so let's discuss this mechanism so as you can see in this diagram there are two portion of the earthworm one is thin and long one is thick and short so i am taking a, a internal structure from this area of the earthworm in this area where the body is thin and elongated as you can see right over here the green color are muscles which are circular muscles and these circular muscles are in the form of contracted circular muscles are contracted while the red muscles are longitudinal muscle which runs along the length of the body longitudinal muscles are relaxed in this stretch so when circular muscles are contracted and longitudinal muscles are relaxed the body become thin and long and when i take a cross section from this area of the body as you can see right over here green color muscles are circular muscle at this stage these muscles are relaxed and red muscles are longitudinal muscles and longitudinal muscles are in the form of contraction these are contracted muscle when longitudinal muscle contract and circular muscle relax body become thick and short so right over here body is thick and short right over here body is long and elongated and thin thick and short elongated and thin so in this way alternately when circular muscle contract and then uh, longitudinal relax then longitudinal contract and circular muscle relax it, it can produce a kind of pressure on the silomic fluid and this fluid helps in the locomotion of the animal as you can see in the next diagram the animal is pushing forward with the help of these contractions and this contraction exert pressure on the fluid and this pressure fluid push the body towards the forward end so this is the forward end of the body so right, right over here as you can see longitudinal muscle are contract and circular relax now here circular muscle are contract and then uh, longitudinal muscle are relaxed then again circular muscles are relaxed and longitudinal muscles are con in contraction form so in this way alternate contraction and relaxation of muscle helps the body to push forward at the same time these uh, animals also contain a pair of chitinous bristles which are known as ct or kt which are present on in the in each segment of the body these ct helps uh, to penetrate in the soil and helps to drag the body on the forward side so in this way with the help of uh, ct and muscles these animal can move forward so in this way uh, today we had discussed hydrostatic skeleton with the help of two examples uh, i hope it makes sense and we'll see you in the next lecture until then bye